Hey everyone, and welcome to uh, this deep dive. It's great to have you with us today. We're diving into something I know a lot of you have been curious about, Pi Network. And, you know, especially with all the buzz around that, what was it, $314,000 figure? 314519 Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. So we've got a whole stack of research articles here ready to kind of sift through all the noise and, and get to the bottom of this. You know, so what's real? What's hype? What's wishful thinking? We're going to break it all down for you. Well, and, and it is interesting because, you know, there is undeniable hype around Pi Network. But when you look at what Pi Network is actually saying themselves, they're not necessarily pushing this, like, get-rich-quick narrative. Right. They're really emphasizing utility, building a cryptocurrency that you can actually use hmm. for everyday transactions. So, like, paying for your morning coffee with Pi. Exactly. Or settling up with friends for dinner. That's the vision they're painting. Yeah. A digital currency woven into the fabric of our daily lives. Okay, so then how does that vision square with all the speculation about its future value? Well, that's where things get really interesting because Pi is currently in a, what they call a closed mainnet phase. Okay. What that means is it's not listed on public exchanges yet. So yeah. there's no official trading going on. So no one's actually buying or selling it. Exactly. So those price predictions you see, especially the really outlandish ones, they become pretty questionable at that point. Yeah. So how are people even coming up with these figures if there's no actual trading happening? Well, you know, some platforms are basing their estimates on things like predicted adoption rates, community engagement, and they suggest, you know, Pi might start trading somewhere between $1 to $5 okay. post-launch. Others are far more optimistic, forecasting potential growth to $10, even $100 by 2030. But, you know, those are heavily dependent on Pi Network actually achieving some pretty ambitious goals. It's a lot of ifs and maybes, right? It's like mm. trying to predict the weather three months out. Yeah. Okay. And then there's that whole, keep coming back to this figure, the $314,000 global consensus value thing. Is there any truth to that? You know, we dug into that. And frankly, it seems like more of a social media fantasy than anything concrete. You mm -hmm. see it circulating on platforms like Telegram, Facebook. But we couldn't find any official statement from Pi Network to actually support it. Oh, wow. And you have to remember, Pi is not openly traded yet. So any specific valuation, especially one that dramatic, should be taken with a mountain of salt. So basically, don't go quitting your day job just yet. All right, we'll we'll keep digging into this. Yeah, stick with us as we unpack Pi's unique mobile mining model, right. how it works, the lockup feature, and what it all means for the future of this cryptocurrency. Definitely. Okay, so let's get real for a second. You know, while Pi Network has generated a lot of buzz, it's also attracted its fair share of criticism. Sure. And honestly, some of it is pretty valid. Uh, for starters, this whole closed mainnet situation, yeah. it raises some eyebrows. You right. know, they say they'll eventually open it up, let Pi trade on exchanges. But there's no firm timeline. Right. And that lack of transparency makes some people nervous. It's like being promised a delicious meal, but not knowing when you'll actually get to eat it. Exactly. You start to wonder if there's even a meal at all. Right. And, and that uncertainty. Yeah. It fuels speculation, even potential price manipulation. Hmm. Because since Pi isn't openly traded, there's no real price discovery happening. Right. The only values we see are those speculative figures floating around, which could be easily influenced. Okay. Let's talk about the mobile mining model. Yeah. On the one hand, it's brilliant, right? Mm -hmm. It makes mining accessible to anyone with a smartphone. But some experts question whether this can truly support a secure, decentralized blockchain in the long run. It's a fascinating trade-off. You know, traditional cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, yeah. they rely on these energy-intensive mining operations to secure their networks. Right. Pi's approach, while innovative, might not offer the same level of security or decentralization. Only time will tell if it's truly sustainable. So we've got concerns about the closed mainnet, the potential for manipulation, and the long-term viability of mobile mining. Anything else we should add to the list? Well, there's the elephant in the room, Pi's real-world utility. Yeah. They talk about this vibrant app ecosystem where you can use Pi for everything, but right now it's mostly theoretical. It's like having a shiny new toolbox with all the latest gadgets but no actual projects to work on. Exactly. For Pi to succeed, they need developers building compelling apps that people actually want to use, integrating Pi in a way that makes sense for everyone. It's a tall order, and there's no guarantee they can pull it off. Okay, so we've laid out both the potential and the pitfalls. It's a complex picture and honestly pretty captivating to watch unfold. But what do you think is driving this immense interest in Pi Network? Is it just the dream of striking it rich? 
Or is there something more? I, I think it goes deeper than that. You know, Pi, with its mobile-first approach, it taps into this desire for greater financial inclusion. It's giving people who might feel shut out of traditional financial systems a chance to participate in something new, potentially revolutionary. It's like Pi is democratizing cryptocurrency, making it accessible to anyone with a smartphone. Exactly. That's incredibly powerful, especially in places where traditional banking is limited. And then there's a community aspect. You know, Pi Network has fostered this strong sense of belonging among its users. Yeah. People are drawn to the collaborative nature of the project, the feeling that they're part of something bigger. It's almost like a social movement. You can really feel that energy in their online communities. Oh, absolutely. People are genuinely excited about Pi and believe in its potential to change things. And that collective belief, that shared sense of purpose, it can be a powerful driving force. It's what fuels the hype, the speculation, the unwavering optimism, whether it translates into long-term success. That's the big question. All right, so we've covered the technical side, the criticisms, the human element. But let's bring it back to our listener, who's been with us every step of the way. Yeah. What should they take away from all this? The biggest takeaway is to approach Pi, and really any cryptocurrency, with a critical and informed perspective. Okay. Don't get swept up in the hype or blinded by those price predictions. Do your own research. Understand the technology, the team, and most importantly, the risks. Crypto is still a young and evolving space. Absolutely. You have to be an informed participant, not just a passive bystander. Ask questions challenge assumptions, make your own judgments based on facts, not just emotion. Exactly. And remember, the true value of any cryptocurrency lies in its utility, its ability to solve real-world problems and empower individuals. That's what we should be focusing on, not just the potential for quick profits. Well said. And on that note, I want to leave you with one final thought to chew on. We've talked about Pi Network itself, but what about the broader implications of this mobile-first approach? Could this be the key to unlocking global financial inclusion? Or is it just a passing trend? It's a question worth pondering. Absolutely. It's a question without easy answers. But it's precisely the kind of question that should spark debate and push us to explore new possibilities. This is where things get really fascinating and where your own research comes in. Mm. Be it, because, frankly, no one has a crystal ball. It's true. And that's what makes this whole exploration so exciting. Yeah. We're at the forefront of a potential financial revolution with all its complexities and uncertainties. And who knows, maybe you'll be one of the people shaping what comes next. Speaking of shaping what comes next, we'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Join us on our Telegram channel. Share your insights, your questions, even your disagreements. Let's keep this conversation going. You know, as we wrap up this deep dive into Pi Network, I keep coming back to that tension we discussed, the push for a real-world utility versus the allure of speculative games. It's a tightrope walk for many cryptocurrencies, mm. and Pi is no exception. It's like they're trying to build a bridge to the future of finance, but they also need people to invest in the bricks and mortar to make that bridge a reality. Exactly, and that closed mainnet adds another layer of intrigue, you know? Okay. It creates this air of scarcity, this what's behind the curtain mystique that can drive speculation, but also makes it hard to gauge real demand. It's almost like a social experiment. Mm -hmm. They're asking people to commit to this vision to lock up their pie and trust that it will pay off down the line. It's a bold move and it'll be fascinating to see how it plays out. Yeah, and what we've seen with other cryptocurrencies is that the transition to an open mainnet can be a wild ride. Oh yeah. There's often this initial surge of excitement followed by a period of volatility as the market finds its footing. It's like opening the floodgates. Yeah. All that pent up anticipation and speculation comes rushing out. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how Pi Network manages that transition. Yeah. And whether they can maintain some semblance of stability. And that's where the real test of their vision will come. Can they transition from this early, somewhat experimental phase to a truly functional, widely adopted cryptocurrency? So for our listener who's been on this deep dive with us, absorbing all the ins and outs of Pi Network, mm -hmm. what's a key takeaway they should walk away with? I think the most important thing is this. Don't let the hype cloud your judgment. Pi Network is an intriguing experiment, but it's still an experiment. There's potential, yes, but there are also significant risks. Yeah, we've talked about the closed mainnet, the lack of a clear timeline, the questions surrounding their technology. These are things you can't just brush aside. Do your own research. Go beyond the headlines and the social media buzz. Read their white paper. Understand their roadmap. And most importantly, think critically about their claims. And remember, the crypto world is full of projects that promised the moon but ended up fizzling out. It's important to be discerning. 
to ask tough questions and to be prepared for the possibility that things might not go as planned. Exactly. And if you do decide to get involved with Pi Network or any cryptocurrency for that matter, don't invest more than you can afford to lose. This is still a high risk space. And it's important to manage your expectations and your financial exposure. Well said. And on that note, we want to invite you to join the conversation. Head over to our Telegram channel. It's a great place to share your thoughts, ask questions, and connect with other curious minds who are exploring the world of crypto. We've got a vibrant community over there and we'd love to hear your perspectives. And of course, if you enjoyed this deep dive, please subscribe to our channel and give this episode a thumbs up. It helps more people find these conversations. And don't forget to share it with your friends. Let's spread the knowledge and help everyone navigate this exciting but often confusing world of cryptocurrency. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep asking those tough questions.